We're back with another look at Raging Heroes line of miniatures. Spiking bits. <laughs> they're not joking when they say they're the toughest girls in the galaxy. What's up, hobby maniacs? I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and we are checking out Raging Heroes larger scale kit, so I guess a troop kit and a larger scale kit today as we continue to showcase some of their miniatures that they sent us for you guys. Uh, like I said, I've been using their, their line, a couple of different miniatures here and there for several years, but I didn't have any of the newer stuff and I haven't worked with some of the new material that they started using since all their Kickstarters and stuff. So I wanted to check them out and they offered to send them. So I said, hey, this might just work out. So real quick, before we jump into the miniatures, I wanted to show you their website. Now, a couple of things that come, that pop right out at me that you may not notice right at first is they're always having some sales going on. This one, they have a special uh, January sale, two for the price of one. Sometimes special miniatures pop up that you can get. If you spend a certain amount, you get them for like five or 10 bucks. They have a pretty robust line. Uh, between fantasy, sci-fi, they got army pack deals in here. If you're looking for a specific range, you can check that out. They even get chaotic miniatures here. But I think what I always like to showcase the most for everyone is the fact that you can convert the dollars, right now it's set to US dollars, but in Euro to US dollars, the difference is pretty much what you would expect to see if you know there was an exchange rate and obviously money moves and you always have to pay for it, but it's a little ridiculous in some cases uh, that we've showcased in the past with miniature companies selling uh, the conversion rates, just setting it too ridiculously high as in the case with uh, Games Workshop and per perhaps Forge Roll and things. But this review is obviously about Raging Heroes. Now here, you can kind of see the Jailbirds line that they have, which is more kind of steampunky, and then they've got Curva Novas, they've got Chaotic stuff, Space Knights, they pretty have, uh, they just have a range that really goes on and goes on. Uh, we're gonna look at probably some of the Jailbirds today. I think we got in some of the Iron Empire too, so let me show you those. These are a little bit more what you would expect to see in the Grimdark future kind of type deal. Not necessarily like in a Mad Max kind of post Armageddon. This is definitely something that you would see, and I think we showed you this one last time here in um, Warhammer 40k for instance or you know just a good one-off piece but they've got multiple poses multiple or excuse me multiple head swaps multiple weapon options in a lot of cases you can even switch between the material you can't see it there but there's a resin uh, material here that's available for $17 or you could get what it looks to be uh, the white metal version that's on sale right there. So lots of different options on here. Make sure you look through the site, make sure you look and understand what material you are getting as well. It's a very robust site and there's a lot of information here. So make sure you process it all before you hit that pay now button, right? So back to what we're gonna take a look at today, uh, a lineup of two box sets. And we're not gonna show you everything, just kind of give you an idea of what comes in each one and we built one of the units, uh, I think it was for the Sisters of Eternal Mercy last time in the last video, so I'll link that below so you can check that out. But we'll probably build uh, the mech in probably a single character right here just to show you all the sizing and kind of the detail and the material and stuff like that that I think is, is really important when you're checking out a new company for the first time yourself. Uh, now, pricing-wise, uh, this particular kit, this mecha kit right here is, uh, I think it's about 38 US. The uh, single model is 20, which, you know, is on point with something you would expect, multi-part kit. Uh, it's way less than a multi-part kit from Games Workshop, but still on par with what you would expect from any other resin maker out there that we've showcased in the past, that maybe any of them that we haven't gotten to yet. And then the squads themselves are 2268. Now, these are the crew squads uh, but they also have like, well, the troopers, but they also have command versions of them too. So if you want to combine them to make a 10 man squad, you're talking, you know, $42 for, for 10 resin miniatures, which starts to, when you can, when you compare it to some of the multi-part kits, like something from Games Workshop for 10 models, it starts to become more expensive. So you really have to kind of do your due diligence and price it to something from Forge World or something like it from a competitor, which their competitors, they're all pretty much the same price as the people we've showcased in the past. But the Games Workshop, obviously the plastic kits are gonna be less, 
but these are more detailed. It's comparing resin to plastic, which isn't a fair comparison in a lot of realms. So we're just gonna kind of avoid that, but I wanted to mention that right off the bat. Now let's dive in and take a look at, uh, let's take a look at the Mecca first. So I already showed you this in the first video, but they reuse a lot of their sleeves, which I feel like is pretty smart. And there on the back, you can kind of see the components and the things that are gonna come inside of it. Open it up, a nice secure corrugated cardboard box. They have a thank you card in here. Again, you don't see that very often from any company. I can, like, it, like I said, count them on my hand how many times we've seen a thank you note. Um, and it's not many. And how to wash resin and how to prime resin, which are very important things here. And we have covered that in the past. Your, it looks to be a 50 millimeter base. And then the model itself, like I said, if it's gonna come busted, it's probably the, the whole package is gonna be broke because you got bubble wrap, you got everything contained inside of a little nice little plastic bag and we'll open that up and show you guys the components here in a sec. Okay, so here's the components for the Mecca. And as you can probably already tell, it's a little bit different composition than what you may or may not be used to. And that's because this is probably cast in a, a large cylinder kind of spin mold type deal with resin material that kind of spreads out through it. And then of course you've got all the grooves and everything and that's how you get a good fill on the model. Now, I might just be spitballing, that might not be how it's made, but that's what it looks like to me right here. This is gonna take a lot more time to clean up and work on than uh, even a kit from Forge World or some of the other uh, resin makers out there. It's just the nature of the material. It is gonna hold detail well. It's gonna be slightly brittle from all appearances and we'll build it here in a second and I'll tell you. So you're gonna obviously, you know, wanna take care when building resin and wear, you know, a mask and everything so you don't get that stuff down in your lungs. But for the most part, um, you're gonna get a, a good cast, but the material might not be exactly what you're expecting. And the hobby time might be a little bit longer. Now, that being said, hey, you gotta ask yourself at the end of the day, is this something I wanna work with? For most folks who are used to this sort of thing, I mean, the, the hobby is about uh, putting forth the effort and you know going through and trimming down all the mold lines and things like that. And there are some pretty substantial mold lines in there that you may or may not be able to see from this, but you can also see that there's a lot of detail in there too. So it's if the de if the design speaks to you, and remember you can get these this these models in a variety of different material. This is just their base resin material right here. Um, then maybe that's more the avenue that you want to go. But I'm just I'm showing you exactly what's going to come out of the box, and now we're going to put this mecha together. And you know, you're talking at least an hour, an hour and a half, maybe more of hobby time just to assemble this miniature. So here we are, lapse time. Uh, I would say I would say a solid two hours. And there was a little bit of frustration getting uh, the components to glue together. Um, that just may be the glue I had on hand, but um, a little little bit of a frustration. But it's okay, we're past it now. And uh, I got to tell you what, I didn't realize, I like the design of this, but uh, they give you the arms, they give you straight arms and bent arms. There's actually a bunch of components that are uh, left over right here, uh, some, a different gun and uh, some different heads and stuff. So you can pose the walker based on how, you know, or the, the driver based on how the walker is, which is a really cool idea, you know, something I kind of out of the matrix. And I really dig that. But you can also tell that, you know, this, uh, there's some chunks. Let me see. I didn't spend a whole lot of time filing things down, but there's a little bit of a slip mold right there. But that's stuff you will see from time to time. But, you know, it's something you can notice for yourself as you're looking at the video here as well. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention that, yes, this material is a little bit more brittle, but it has great detail work and it is going to take... Um, a, per, potentially a little bit more time to hobby on than than you might be ready for, so just look out for that. But overall, I think it's a I think it's a great miniature, and I think it's I think it's a pretty good price as far as that goes. Uh, as with all the stuff we show you so far uh, from Raging Heroes here. Now here's the other character that we are going to show you today, uh, Sister Ar Ardina Ardina Pillar of the Faith. Now she's kind of standing up on this pillar here, and I was like looking at it, and I was like, hmm. All right, this might be a really interesting one to showcase. As you might notice, it's going to have a, kind of a two-part on the front here. So when we put this together, I'm kind of concerned because 
there might be, while the detail is great, there's gonna be a little bit of gapping right there. And that's where Vallejo Plastic Putty comes in and that stuff really works well. And we've showed that to you in a lot of different videos here. But I mean, you can tell by, I mean, just the detail work there, it's uh, it's fantastic. Uh, this is that, mm, I, like a little bit more of a brittle resin that we showed you, but again, they have different options. They have some white metal options available and things. So you really just kind of got to get what you're comfortable with. Uh, this is what we've got, so we're gonna we're gonna make it work um, and put this together, scrape it all down, and come on back and show you. Whew, let me tell you what her is tiny. This is this is <laughs> this is a lot to work with here. You can see the gapping that I was telling you about, but you can also see a lot of the detail. Like look at the cloak. The cape, all the ornateness up here with everything across there. Now, she's got her hands resting on her face right there because there's actually a sword, uh, this sword in fact, that goes right there and then rests on the base, which we haven't glued her down to quite yet. And then there's some bolters and things that I guess you can just put on her belt over there. I didn't really look at it, but I was really excited to kind of show you this model. So. I feel overall just a little bit of Alejo Plastic Putty. It's a really nice, nicely detailed model. You can see all the mold release in here. This is why you want to wash your figures with a little soapy water because all that mold release is going to make it really hard to kind of prime on. But other than that, uh, the model looks, looks really, really good and really well detailed here. But you're going to want to... <laughs> It is going to take a little bit more time to kind of put together and you're going to want to be very careful snipping all those pieces off the miniature. Now here is one of the uh, the other troopers from last unboxing we showed you. And so she does appear to be a little bit taller. So they're kind of keeping their characters a little bit bigger than their trooper lines right there, which is uh, very, very cool to see. And real quick, we just opened up one of the Jailbird sets just to kind of show you how it comes. And this set is kind of more of the resin that you might be used to working with from different companies. It's not as brittle. It's a little bit more forgiving. And I feel like it's it's a softer resin. Uh, I prefer to work with that. And here you can see some of the components that are going to come in this kit right here. These are the line troopers, uh, so to speak. And they have a like a side command that you can buy as well. So... I mean, detail wise, I was just kind of looking at it and they are very well, very well detailed. They're going to hold the soft resin. It holds about just as much as detail as that, that crisper stuff. Now, I don't know the rhyme or reason. Maybe it's just old stock or maybe like new Kickstarter, but I like to think these are a little bit more recent than some of the stuff I've shown you already. So perhaps they're kind of upgrading and using newer material here. And here you can see a really nice, um, pose right here and kind of i don't know which one this is the one uh it's like running or reaching up or something right there but like i said the the details are really good you can see all the bullets and everything on the bandolier right there and yeah everything appears to be in place and all of that goes together and I like that they put the the the, uh, the little sprue line right there to the leg and not on the butt because sometimes when you when you put those sprues there, it's really hard to get that perfectly rounded back down. And I feel like if you're getting a lady miniature, that's one of the features that you kind of want to accent. You want to you know have it there because it, it's just part of the miniature, and you don't want it to be all like shaved off or like you know in, improper looking, so to speak. But like I said, some of their designs um, they seem to be pretty good and they may come with this softer resin. I don't know the difference between them. I'll, I'll shoot them an email and try to find out. Um, maybe I can hear back before this uh, video goes live. So that was a look at all of the last three things I kind of wanted to show you. There's the Iron Empire too that I'm sure are uh, very well done. You can see on the back some of the options and things so going forward i expect them to get better and better and hopefully use some more of this uh, resin the softer resin here that folks seem to like a little bit better than uh perhaps you know some of that more brittle stuff like uh the mecca right here is using but some of the newer designs seem to be using that uh softer resin right there so overall i think uh, i think they're pretty cool and if you want to compare them to some of this other stuff here like uh, some g-dub stuff we got a little Dire Avenger Duder, and you can kind of see exactly how big they are. And then here is a blast from Spiky Bits Past as well. 
we've got the gluttony demon duder guy and we painted him up several several years ago and this was a this was that softer kind of quality resin which is maybe you know just being that size it's just what they had to use just to give you an idea of uh, you know demon print size right there so we've got all sorts of different miniatures floating around right here throughout the ages and it's uh, it's good to finally get some of these uh, raging heroes uh, on camera as well. So what do you think about Raging Heroes? Drop it in the comments below. I'd like to hear what you think personally of uh, of them. If you'd like to see more of them here on the channel and perhaps we can reach out and get some more of the miniatures uh, here for us to showcase and review as well. So I'm Rob Bear again. Thank you for your time. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.